Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome again to Coffee in the Word. Listen, grab the Bible, the Word of God, and let's get in the Word together today because I believe God has some great things for us. You know, the month of February, we talk about Valentine's Day and love and right down the line. So I just thought, you know, this whole month, we need to look at the love of God and we need to be people of love. You know, in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, the great love chapter of the Bible, the Apostle Paul says this, For now we see in a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now we know in part, but then I shall know even as I am known. You know, Paul says right now we don't see everything. You know, if you see through a glass dark, that means you see some of it, but you can't see every detail. You don't know everything exactly that as it is. You can get a general image of it. It's just like if you were looking through a dark glass, you could maybe tell the color of a cup. You could tell it was a cup, but you wouldn't necessarily know the color of it or the things or the, the certain things. So that's what the Lord is saying to us. He's saying in this life, you can't see everything. You don't know everything. It's like looking through a glass darkly. That's, that's why we have to trust God and walk with God. But then he goes on and he says this. And he says, but then we shall know as we're known. There's coming a day. We'll see it all, praise God. We'll know it all. We'll walk in it all. But until that day comes, verse 14, he tells us this, or verse 13, I'm sorry. He says, and now by his faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Notice this. God is speaking through the Apostle Paul in this chapter, and he's saying to us, He's saying, listen, you don't know everything like you need to know it. You're not seeing everything exactly as it is all the time. But here's something that I've done for you. I've given you three spiritual laws that you can operate in and walk in success and victory. He says, the first thing I want you to know is this. Faith is a living force that will operate in your life. And, you know, faith moves mountains. You, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, without faith, you can't please God. And Galatians three eleven, the just live by faith. So and we're saved by faith and, and we pray in faith and we trust God every day. So faith becomes a, a way that we can operate in such a manner that even though we don't know everything in its fullness, we know that God is going to get us through, and we just begin to trust Him. But then he goes on, he says, the next part of it is, is hope. Now, hope is joyful, confident expectation. Joy is the exact opposite of, of, of somebody who has no hope, no, no, just they're down, they're in despair, everything is going under. You know, and a lot of people live in that mundane, defeated attitude, but hope says, I don't care what it looks like, I don't care what I see, what I feel, I believe that God is going to come through for me. And so you begin to live in that hope. You hope for the things of God in your life. That means you're joyfully, confidently expecting God to do for you what He said He would do. Even though I don't see it all, I believe God's coming through for me. But then the final thing here, He says, is love. Praise God. We can walk in love. God's love has been poured into our hearts, Romans 5, 5, by the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, God pours His love into your life. And you know what we should be doing right now? We should be living our lives doing the things of God and walking in love and growing in love. In fact, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 begins by saying, pursue love. Eagerly pursue love, the Amplified says. In other words, I should pursue love with all that is within me because the apostle said up there that the greatest of these is love. Now, why is love the greatest? Because faith and hope operate through love. In fact, the Bible says in Galatians 5, 6, faith works through love. And without love, you have no hope. And the Bible teaches also that God is love. And so therefore, I need to just set myself, I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to live in love. I'm going to let love govern the way I live and what I do. You know, in 1 John 2, 5, it says that the love of God grows and is matured and perfected and becomes real in us as we keep God's word. You know how I walk in love? I make up my mind that I'm going to do it like God does it. I'm going to live like God wants me to live. I'm going to treat people like God wants me to treat them. And I'm going to let God be glorified in my life. So during this month, don't try to love with a feeling. Don't try to love with sight. Don't try to love with just, you know, emotions. Learn to love out of a respect and out of a true honor that God has placed in your heart. And let's walk in love. Let's just let love govern our actions, govern how we talk to people, how we respond to people. And if we do, the Bible says up here in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, love never fails. God's love in us will put us in a place where no matter what comes our way, 
we will get the victory. So I want to challenge you today. Get in the Word. Say, I'm going to pattern my life the way God wants it to be patterned. I'm going to live it the way God wants it to live. And I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to do it God's way by doing it through God's Word. And love will rule in your life. Amen? So, during this great month of February, as winter begins to close down and we begin to get ready for spring, just let's just choose right now. I'm going to be a person of love. I'm going to follow God, and I'm going to let love govern my faith. Love's going to govern my hopes, and I'm going to let love govern my actions. So walk in love, be an overcomer in this life. Amen? Till next time, I'm praying for you that God's very best will be yours.